Wordle is a game where you try to guess a five letter word in only six tries. Um, as you enter words, it's going to tell you if you got a letter in the correct position, that's the right letter. And it'll also tell you if you got uh, the correct letter, but it's not in the correct position. So for my first word, I'll put in the word parts. And uh, we can see that there's an R and a T in the final word, but uh, it's not in the third and fourth spot. So for my second word, I'll try roots. Here we can see we got R and O in the right spot. Um, there's still an O and a T, and it's not in that spot. So for my third word, try robot. And there we go. We got the right word. So. I thought it would be fun to try to write a program that solves this game. And I'm going to share my problem solving process as I go. So let's get started. I'm going to start with some principles that I usually take when solving these types of problems. So, uh, first of all, I'm going to take a top down approach. And what I mean by that is uh, with a, before I start jumping into algorithms and data structures, uh, I'm going to come up with an overall structure for how I want the code to look. Uh, I have a pretty good idea of kind of what components I'm going to need and maybe what functions I'm going to need. And then I can start looking at those functions and filling them in uh, with the appropriate algorithms. And once I know what algorithms I need, um, then I can pick the appropriate data structures. Uh, the other principle is I'm going to make this an iterative approach. And uh, what I mean by that is I'll start with a really simple solution. It's not going to be optimal. Um, it'll be uh, just sort of a naive brute force approach. And then from there, we can iterate and start picking parts that uh, pick parts of the algorithm that we want to improve on. Uh, we'll come up with ideas as we go that we can revisit later and ultimately make it um, better and as efficient as possible. But the key is start simple and uh, we can improve as we go. Um, and another point I want to make here is um, we want to make sure our improvements actually make our solution better. So it's easy to add complexity and not realize that we're actually not improving our, our guesses very much. So we'll have to come up with some way to measure how good our program is. And then um, whenever we add or change something, we can check that measurement to see if we actually made some sort of meaningful improvement. Let's do some whiteboarding. So for this problem, I'm going to use Python because I don't think we're going to need anything super process intensive. And also, Python is really good at like string manipulation. Um, it should make that a little bit easier for me. Uh, but you should be able to use any programming language for this. Now I want to try to come up with sort of an overall code structure, um, and maybe list out some of the pieces of uh, data that I'm going to need in my code. And right off the bat, we're going to need a dictionary of words to choose from. Um, you're actually not allowed to just put in random words into this. Um, you have to put in like a valid word from uh, the game's dictionary. So this should be something we could probably find online. Uh, we can just download it and load it into our code. So for our code structure, the first thing we're going to do, load in words. Now, if we think about how this game works, um, Basically, uh, we have to give the game a word. So we pick a word. I'll put parts again. Uh, when we submit that, we get some sort of results. Um, if we were correct, the game would be over. But if you're not right, then you do the same thing. You pick another word, and you get more results. So I'll put in another word and we get more results. So that's going to repeat until 
either we hit six guesses or um, we get the word correct. So in other words, um, in our pseudocode solution, what that translates to is we're going to loop until we find the word. And uh, what are we going to do in that loop? Uh, the first thing we're going to do, our code is going to have to pick a word. And it's going to it's going to basically select a word from that dictionary that we loaded in. Um, the second thing it's going to do, our code is going to have to be aware of what the results of that word were. So I'll say get results. Um, and we could actually like interface with this website and you know input the word and scrape the results. Uh, I probably won't make it so complicated, and I can just input this. I can, when my program tells me what word, I'll go type it in. And when I get the results, I'll bring that back to my code. So I'm just going to input the guess results. Now, uh, we're either going to be done, or more likely, we're going to have to loop back and pick another word. Here's how our algorithm is going to work. We start with a word list, which we've loaded in, which contains every five letter word. Next, our program is going to pick a word. That'll be our guess. So I'm going to randomly just pick print. And we'll enter that into the game. And we'll get some kind of guess result. So I have our notation here, x, meaning uh, that letter is not in the answer word, y, meaning that letter is in the answer word, but it's in the wrong position. And G meaning it's the right letter, it's in the right position. Once we have that result, our code can loop through the word list and filter it, filter words out whether it matches this same guess result mask. So let's go through the list. Uh, Apple, um, we know that it cannot have a P in it. So Apple is out. Next, we'll go to Banks. Uh, banks does not have a P. But the next requirement is that the result has to have an R in it. Banks doesn't have an R, so it's out. Next, we have Candy. Uh, again, it does not have a P, but it has to have an R. So Candy's out. Fangs, same reason. Gully, it's out. Then we get to print, which happens to be the word that we guessed. Uh, we should take this out because we already guessed it, so it doesn't need to be in the, the list anymore. Uh, robot is going to be our answer word. That's what we we're trying to find, but we don't know yet. Um, it does have an R in it, so we're good. It does not have a P in it. Uh, it does not have an I. It does not have an N. And it ends in a T. So we'll keep that in our list. Next, we have roots. Uh, it does not have a P. It has an R, it doesn't have an I or an N. It has a T, but it's in the wrong position. So roots actually gets filtered out. Uh, Scout gets filtered out because it does not have an R. Uh, short actually stays in because it does not have a P. It has an R, does not have an I or an N, and it ends in the T. And then lastly, we have worst. Uh, again, this stays in list because uh, it does not have a P, has an R, does not have an I or an N, and it ends in a T. So now we have a filtered list. Uh, we went from uh, what is this? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 words, and we filtered it down to three candidates. So what do we do? We loop back, and we do it again. So now this time, our next guess is just going to be a random word from the list. We'll pick short. And we get this result from the game. Uh, there's no S. There's no H. There has to be an O, an R, and a T. But the O and the R are in the wrong position here. So all of the previous words are going to remain filtered. We get back to robot. Uh, of course, we know robot matches this pattern. Um, Root scout is out. So short is now out. That was the guess word, and it was wrong. And worst is also out. 
uh, because we know there's no S. And so S is out. And there we have it. We've arrived at the answer, robot. That should be uh, the high level structure of our code. Um, all we need to do pretty much from here is fill in each of these pseudocode um, functions and we can start to uh, have kind of just a very basic solution that we can test out. All right, it's time to start filling in some of the code. So I'm gonna start with uh, loading in the words. Uh, I've got a word dictionary that I downloaded. So I'm gonna uh, basically loop through this file and exclude words that have any numbers or characters and make sure they're all five letters long. All right, there we have it. We have a list of five letter words loaded in. Um, uh, next step, back to our structure. I'm going to write the pick word function and um, that is going to take an input of our word dictionary and I think that's it. Um, it's only going to need the word dictionary for now, and then it's going to return um, a word from that dictionary. And I, f I expect this will be a key place of improvement in our algorithm, but for now, um, we're just going to pick the first entry in the dictionary. So I'll just make sure that we have um, at least um, one word in the dictionary. Blend birds. So uh, pretty simple. We're just going to return the first word of the dictionary. Um, this is pretty basic, but it should at least get us a solution. And we'll come back and figure out how to make this smarter later on. Next, um, getting the result, this should be straight from uh, console input. So I don't think I have anything to write for that quite yet. And then um, last, I'm gonna implement the filter word list function. Now we can finish our filter words function, which should basically apply this match to everything in the dictionary. Um, so I, we can just write that as a, a list comprehension. There's not really much reason to have a, a, a kind of a one line function, um, but in case I have to use this again, I don't want to retype this. And maybe this will get more complicated later. I'm not sure. So we'll, we'll just leave it as is for now. Uh, I'm going to write a few uh, quick sanity tests just to make sure that this kind of works as I expect. All right, time for the main loop.
All right. We have a very naive solution. Uh, I had to make a couple corrections along the way. Um, I was indexing some of the wrong variables up here. Uh, pretty um, obvious errors that I probably would have caught with some unit testing, but uh, that's what this is all about is uh, just kind of testing it as we go. So uh, yeah, I'll do a quick demonstration. I'm gonna use the word robot again. And um, basically our main loop here is going to give us a word, print it out. It's gonna ask us to give us the guess results. Uh, so I'll just pretend I'm inputting it into the game. And then um, if we get it right, we're done. Uh, otherwise, we'll filter the words and keep going. In fact, I might even uh, put a print in here, which is how big the dictionary is. Um, actually, we can. That way, you can you can see how this uh, the solution space gets smaller as we go. So over here. Let's run our word. So we start with 22,000 words in the dictionary. And right off the bat, so remember the word I'm going to use is robot. Uh, none of these letters are in it. So x, 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 five, frame, five. But just by that, we're down to 3,700 words remaining in the solution space. Uh, the next word, so there's a B. There's only one B, so we'll do Y, it's in the wrong spot. X, X is not in there. R is in there, but it's the wrong spot. And then T is in the correct place, G. So in only two guesses so far, we're down to three words left in the dictionary. Um, o, B, R, I, T, so we have, yes, that's in there, yes, that's in there. S, I is not in there, and then T. There we go. Robot. Green all around. So that was one, two, three, four guesses. Uh, not bad. I would have passed the test. So we have a solution. Uh, it seems to work. Uh, but the question is, how good is it? Uh, and we might even have some ideas already for where we want to improve. Um, for example, I think our picks could use a lot of improvement, but how do we know whatever change we make is actually better? Um, the way we're going to do this is basically by repeatedly running through this loop um, with random words. So I chose a robot the first time, but uh, we could just pick a random word and see how many guesses it takes to get there. Now I could do that by hand. I could run it a hundred times and just count how many times it takes, but of course uh, we're programmers, so let's see if we can turn this into an automated loop. Uh, but I still want to be able to play it. So I'm going to create like an AI flag, and when that's set to true, it's just going to uh, run through, say, a hundred times, and output the average number of guesses that it takes to get there. Converted the, the main uh, loop into a function called play, uh, where there's an AI parameter passed in defaulting to false. If I pass it in as true, a few things are going to be different. Um, one, we're going to actually pick the correct word, which I was uh, pretending was outside of the game before, but now it, it'll be an actual random selection from the dictionary. Um, we're not going to print all these details because if we run this hundreds of times, then we don't want to see all this, this output. Um, we're also not going to ask for the guess results as input. Uh, we're going to have to evaluate the guess results ourselves um, based on that, that correct word that was picked. So I have to write this function as well. So basically, given the correct word and the guess that was picked, um, it's going to return the string of you know XYG 
uh, to, to continue the filter process. And then lastly, I added this number of guesses, um, which I'll be incrementing after each guess. And that way we have some measuring function. And in fact, I'm gonna make the play uh, function return that. So I can just call this um, an arbitrary number of times and then take an average. So we'll have an average number of guesses for our AI. All right, I uh, had a minor bug fix, um, but I have our AI working where uh, if I play a single time, so let me clear this. Um, I also added a verbose flag to um, always print out everything. And that'll help a lot with debugging, um, just in case our AI is flying through and it picks a word and it fails for some reason, maybe we have another bug. I'm going to want to see all the steps that it took along the way. So let's just play once and just see how that looks. So here we go. Uh, we have our same first guess, which actually is really good. Wow. Um, the word is laid, and it got YGXGG. So then it picks whatever the heck this word is. Um, pretty interesting, caged, couldn't quite get it, dared, it's barely, barely filtering the list down each time, um, seems to just be getting really caught up whenever there's multiple letters, um, but eventually, it gets to laid. Uh, so that was eight guesses. So now we can just loop this and uh, let's, we'll keep a tally and uh, see how many on average we get after say 100 or so runs. All right, here we go. So there's a couple problems. Uh, our average is 6.07. And remember, we only have six guesses. So on average, technically, we would fail. Um, second problem I see is that there's some that are in like the 11s. Um, I scroll up, you know, eight, seven. OK, I mean, those are kind of close. But uh, I s thought I saw one that was even like 13. Look at that, uh, Wandy if that's even a word, is very difficult for our program to guess. So we're definitely going to have to find some improvements in order to get this. But at least we have some kind of metric now where um, we have a, a target that we can try to beat. And I'll, I'll put the max in there as well so that we can uh, make sure we're staying under. Ideally, our maximum is under six, six or less. Before I forget, I'm going to add a random seed into our um, program just so that we always get the same result whenever we run this. I'll just put it down here. Uh, so if I run this twice, we should hopefully get the same set of words. So. C-O-R-O-T was the first word. Let's try that again. Cool. Uh, that way we're comparing apples to apples when we check our improvements. We should be getting the same word list for both. Uh, so let's bring this back down to one game at a time. And let's just see how our AI plays the game. So first of all, this first word 
is pretty bad. Um, I'm just using intuition here that two letters is probably not a good strategy. Um, there's not that many letters with two A's in it, I'm guessing. And uh, it, you're going to get more than enough clue with just a single A. H also seems like a not very common letter in the alphabet. I would rather have something like L or R or S or something like that. And then looking at our second guess, kind of the same problem. There's two Bs and an X. So they're just like really uncommon letters uh, that you're just not getting many clues from. So even though this only took three guesses, um, I think that was probably kind of lucky. So um, I think this would be a huge improvement if we picked letters. Instead of picking the very first, if we look up at our pick, pick word function, instead of picking the very first letter that's remaining in the dictionary, why don't we pick a word that has common letters in it? Let me explain how I want to go about picking a word that has more common letters in it. I'm going to start by establishing a letter frequency dictionary, which will contain every single letter and how many times it appears in the word list. So the way we can read this is the letter A appears four times in this entire word list. Letter B appears two times, etc. And this should be pretty easy for us to generate. So the way we're going to use this letter frequency dictionary is for each word, we can sum the letter frequency for each letter, and we end up with a score. So apple, we're going to sum A is 4, P is 3, P is 3, L is 3, and E is 1. And there's one small tweak that I'm going to just put in as a hunch that I have. I don't want to add P twice because if you think about the most common letter, for example, S, if there's a word with multiple S's in it, it's just going to dominate. You know, if we, if we have S, it counts as six and there's two S's. I just have a hunch that's not a good idea. So we can try that later, but... I'm only going to count words or letters once. So what we end up for Apple is a score of 11. Um, let's do banks. Uh, so we have 2, A is 4, N is 4, K is 1, and S is 6. That gives us 17. And we'll just go down the list here. And we're looking for the maximum. So the maximum um, is actually a tie between short and worst. Um, so we would just keep track of the very first word that we found that had the highest score of 25. These are very common letters that appear in most of these words. So now our first guess is going to be short. And if we recall, our answer is robot. Our result for short is x x y y g and if we apply that filter to every word in the current word list here's what we get the robot of course matches that result and every other word is filtered out now this is kind of lucky maybe just based on the words that i picked for the example um, but i have a pretty good feeling that this is going to lead to some improvement so let's try it out and see how it affects our average and our maximum guess All right, so now we're looking a lot better. A-E-S-I-R seems like a really good first guess because uh, these are very common letters. They're not repeating each other. And um, 
we actually get this in three guesses instead of six guesses. So let's rerun with 100 games, not verbose, and see what we get. Appears to be a lot better. Uh, we still have worst case of 13, so I might want to look into that. And the average is now 5.3, which is definitely better. We're almost a full guess shorter with that one improvement. So let's take a look at this worst case to see how our game behaves and see if maybe we can come up with some better improvements. If we look for that word, uh, we see it's nines. So I'm going to put that into my code and run it in verbose mode so we can see exactly how it operates. Correct word, nines. Oops. And let's make sure that's in verbose. So uh, what do we see in our in our pattern here is that whatever letters we get correct in the first guess, we always keep in the subsequent guesses. So the second guess, we see that um, we have an I, an S, and an E in it. Because every single word in our dictionary has been filtered to match this result. Um, and that, that seems to work pretty well until you get to this case where um, every single word remaining in the dictionary looks like I-N-E-S. There's nines, dines, binds, all these words. And we just don't get enough information with each subsequent guess because we're limiting ourselves to using the same letters. So we have five letters to play with, and we're only getting more information from the very first letter. So. I've already been kind of tinkering around and uh, I've got an optimization here, which it's gonna work like this. <clears throat> We're gonna keep track of two lists of words. One is gonna be the answer space, which contains the potential remaining word after it's been filtered out each guess. There's gonna be a second word list, which is every single word in the dictionary that never gets filtered. and what we're going to do is build our letter frequencies. So which words should we should we favor and try to pick? That'll be our answer space, which continues to get filtered. But the guess we're going to do is going to be from all words. So we're going to pick a word that can get us more of these letters at a single time and not even worry about letters we've already picked. Um, it's just going to the whole goal is to filter the answer space down to a single word, and then finally it'll guess it. So there we go. We start with the same word. And given those clues, we filter the word list down, so we still only have 248 words remaining in the dictionary, but we pick a totally different word that doesn't even contain any of the same letters. So we're actually getting way more information on the second guess. Um, we go from 248 words down to 15. Um, if we look at this one, we went from 248 down to 77. So we didn't filter as much because we just didn't get as much information so it's still not perfect, but we get, get it in eight guesses instead of 13. So let me clear out. Uh, we'll go back to 100 games and not verbose. And we're not going to force it to be nines anymore. And let's see the overall average performance. All right. So we have improvement. Took an average of five guesses, 5.1 guesses. So that's better than... Previously was over 5.3, and our worst case is only 8. So we're super close to being able to solve this 100% uh, of the time, but we have a couple 7 and 8 guesses, which would push us over the limit for the game. So let's actually try this. I'm going to turn my game into play mode. 
and we'll try it on today's puzzle. So let me I'm going to load today's puzzle. And let's fire up the game. So the first guess it wants me to do is Acer. And we see uh, X, 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 Y, Y. Next guess, con T, G. And the game tells us that that word is not in the list. So that's not even a valid guess according to the game. So we have a huge problem here. Our dictionary of guesses and possible answers does not match the game's dictionary and possible answers. So what I'm going to have to do is figure out what words this game accepts, make sure that our code uses the same exact list. So we've done some digging into the game's code, and we can see that um, it actually has the entire list of words uh, right here. And there's something interesting, which is that they have two lists. One is a list of words you can type in and it'll accept that as a guess. The other is a list of words that it will use as potential answers. And so uh, if you want to go through this, you can see uh, where it where it picks a word um, for the answer in this function here. So we know that um, that first list is possible answers. And this is the list that it'll, it'll use or anything that can be typed in and accepted. So I went ahead and downloaded those lists. Um, I copied those in to my own text file. And so I have two lists now. One is possible words. These are actual answers that could be in the game. And then there's accepted words. So these are words that you could type in and it'll allow that. And we already kind of have this in our code, um, we just did it in a different form because we started with the same word list. So instead of loading one list, we're going to load both lists. And I have my answer list, which is the um, possible words. And I'm never going to filter this, or I'm, I'm going to filter this list as I go. But the accepted words, I'm never going to filter. We're always going to search through this list to pick our next best guess. So let me go ahead and load this in. All right, here we are. Just by filtering that list down to the dictionary they provided, we are at a magic 3.88 and only six guess worst case, which means our program should be able to crack this 100% of the time. Got one last optimization plugged into the pick word function, uh, which is really simple, but if our answer space only has two words left, just pick the first one. That's a 50-50 choice. And there's no reason to pick from the full list of words because um, you're only going to narrow it down to one. You might as well take a guess at that point. So I already ran that through. And here we are at a 3.74 average guess. Worst case is only five guesses down from six. And with that, let's go try it out on today's Wordle. And our first word is odor. We get X, 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 Y. 
only 66 words left in the dictionary. Next word is S-U-L-C-I. And we have XXX, green, yellow. Four words left. B-K-A-H. K is yellow. Two words left. And there it is. Got in four guesses. Not bad. Let's recap. We started with a very simple approach where we had a dictionary of words. We would pick a random word and filter that list, making the solution space smaller and smaller after each guess. It worked, but it wasn't optimal. Before we moved on to optimization, we automated our program so that it could play itself an arbitrary number of times, and we could get some sort of average metrics um, and some goal that we could uh, work towards minimizing. So our first approach had an average of six guesses and a max of 13 guesses, which wouldn't cut it for this game. Our first improvement was trying to pick a better word using letter frequency. So based on the words remaining in the answer space, we could figure out how many of each letter there were, and we could loop through that list to figure out which word had the most of the words or letters in the letter frequency dictionary. Those better picks got us down to an average of 5.3 guesses, and we sell at a max of 13 guesses. The second improvement that we did was we no longer filtered the pick list. So our answer space would get smaller with each guess, but we would pick from the original list uh, because we could actually get more letters and do better filtering uh, by having a wider array of words to choose from. That got us down to an average of 5.12 guesses and the max from 13 down to eight. When we tried that, on the actual game, we learned that our dictionary didn't match the game's dictionary. The game actually has a more strict dictionary, and we actually found out that uh, the game has two different dictionaries. One is for valid words that you can type into the game. The other is words that it'll actually consider as solutions. So just by doing that, we got our average down to 3.88 and a max of 6. This theoretically should be able to solve the game in any case. However, we had one last small improvement where when our answer space is down to only two possible words remaining, let's just pick one of them. Uh, up until this point, our program always picks from the full list of words, trying to reduce that answer space as much as possible each guess. But if there's only two words left, you might as well just try one. If you're wrong, you're down a guess and you try again. And that brought us to our final place of 3.74 guesses on average and a max of five. So where do we go from here? Uh, we certainly don't have an optimal program. Uh, the goal here was just to start simple and make some improvements and see how far we could get. Uh, but I will leave the additional ideas to you. So here's a few maybe to get started. Uh, one thing our program doesn't do is consider the letter position. So for example, our very first word is odor. Just because these are common letters, uh, we don't necessarily know that R should always be in the last position. Maybe there's a more optimal first word where R is in the first position because more words have R in the first position. So I think that's one idea that we could implement and probably improve upon. The other idea is picking a more average letter rather than the most common letter frequency. So let's just say there's uh, 10,000 words in our dictionary and 9,000 of them have an A in it. <clears throat> right now, our program will pick a word with an A in it. Uh, that's not necessarily optimal. What you really want is a letter that's in half of the words. Your goal is to cut that list in half uh, you don't get as much information if every single word has the same letter and you pick that letter. So if you made it this far, just 
want to say thank you for watching. Uh, I would love to hear any improvements, ideas that you have or suggestions, or uh, maybe you caught something that I did wrong. Uh, appreciate it. I hope you learned something. Have a nice day.